Good, Good morning, morning Kiss on Kiss and Lit. We're so glad that you're joining us today. Today I'm here with Miss Shakira. She's going to join me. And with our friends Zara. Hi, Zara. Hi. And Kayla. Hello. Hey, Kayla. Hi. How are you doing? Good? I'm good. They're going to help me with our lesson today. And uh, we are going to learn a little more about what the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. And we're going to talk about what things keep us from growing these good fruits in our lives. But before we start, we want to make sure we put first things first. And what do you think the first thing we should do is? Pray. Yeah, okay. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And invite Jesus to do what he wants to do in our hearts today. Lord, you said that if we acknowledge you and listen for your voice in everything that we do, that you will direct our paths. And so we ask you to give us ears to hear and hearts to understand what you want to show us today. And everyone said, Amen! Amen. Well, last time, Miss French has introduced us to the fruit of the Spirit. If you didn't catch that first lesson, be sure to go back and check it out. And do you remember what these fruits are? Well, they're not apples, they're not bananas, they're not oranges, but we're going to see if Miss Shakira remembers what the first fruit is. Mm -hmm. What is the first fruit? Love. Love. It's very good. We're going to say them all together, and you kids at home, repeat them after us. The fruits of the Spirit are love, love joy, joy, peace, peace patience, patience, kindness, kindness goodness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Good job, everybody. Thank Good you. Good job. Well, the Apostle Paul talks about these good fruits, these spiritual traits that God wants us to develop in our lives. And we can find them in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But in verses 19 through 22, right before that, he talks about something called the deeds of the flesh. What are these deeds of the flesh? Well, they are the opposite of the fruits of the Spirit, and they are not very good at all. Now, I brought with me today a beautiful bouquet. I'll show it to you. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Is that beautiful? Mm. <laughs> well, as you can see, it's not really beautiful at all. It's a bed of weeds. Ooh. And this bed of weeds is, is sort of how our lives can become if we don't stay close to Jesus and we're not producing the fruit of the Spirit. And life is like this bed of soil sometimes, Shakira. Something is going to grow in our lives and something will happen to our spirits. Either we'll grow fruit of the Spirit as good Christians or we will grow weeds of the flesh. Let's listen to some of these acts of the flesh. Find out what they are, what keeps us from growing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And as we do that, Shakira, will you help me? And each time we, we mention one of the works of the flesh, will you pull up a weed and we are going to chuck it in this bag and get rid of it, okay? And so you don't get dirty, we're going to give you these gloves. If you would put those on for me. Mm, mm, mm. Weeds. I hate weeds. I have all these weeds came from my yard. And this was one I particularly hate. Have you ever seen the one that has the little stickers on it? And when you, when you walk through your yard, the little stickers get stuck on your clothes and your socks and your oh, shoestrings. I know. You ever, ever have that happen to you? Mm -hmm. Sorry, you ever had that happen to you? Yes! Yes, and it's terrible because they're really sharp. And if you try to pick them off, you can hurt yourself. Weeds are not good things. So we're going to say the first weed of the spirit. What is that? Who's going to do the first one? Sexual immorality. Can you tell us what that means? Top up them, uh, Kayla, Kayla, you tell us what that means. Um, having sex with anyone other than your husband or wife. Right. The second one, pup. 
Let's Zara. see. Zara, you want to tell us that one? Endless partying without responsibility and without caring about the consequences. Right. Some people do things, they just rush into them and they just because they want to do them and they don't care what happens to them or anybody else. Hmm. And that's the next one is going to be Shakira. Making something more important than that. Idolatry. Idolatry is the name of the, the, the weed. We're supposed to be putting these weeds in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> One. Just pull it right out. Two. Get rid of that old weed. Three. That's idolatry. That's a bad one. Oh, the next one is witchcraft. Do you think that means wearing a pointy hat and flying around on a broomstick? No. No? What do you think that means? It means relying on selfish and deceive people instead of God to tell you what to do. That's right. Some people go to fortune tellers. They don't ask God. They go to people. Mm. And they rely on what those people say. And another thing that witchcraft can mean is manipulating people. Oh, no. Controlling, trying to control people to get them to do what you want, they want you to do. So that is witchcraft. All right, the next one is hatred. The opposite of love. Hatred is the opposite of love. When I think of hatred, well, I think of, uh, you know, all the things that are going on in the world today. And the problems that we have, hatred, the opposite of love. The next one, puppet, puppet friend? Kayla? Discord. Kayla. Discord. And it's stirring up problems among friends and family. Do you ever know a person that knows just what buttons to punch to make people argue with each other? Do you ever do that? No. That is just cool. The next one, Puppet Kayla. It means hating someone because they have things you don't. Right. And the next one is rage. Shakira? It means losing control of your anger. Losing control of your anger. You know, Kayla, when I think of that one, I think of Moses. And you say, what, Moses? Wasn't he a great man of God and a leader of his people? Well, he was all of that. But when he was a young Egyptian prince, and he hadn't learned how to listen to God, and he saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite, and he cared about them, the Israelites, because they were his people. He didn't stop to ask God what he should do. He let his anger got bigger and bigger. And his anger became rage. He couldn't control it. And he ran down there, and what did he do? Just ran right in and, and thought, ooh, ooh, ooh. friends, you he remember what he someone? did? He killed someone? He killed the Egyptian, yes. Oh, and because, no. yeah, and because of that, he became a fugitive. And the consequences of that action were that he was in exile for 40 years. He had to leave his family, he had to leave his friends, he had to leave everything. Oh. And he had to run for his life into the, world, into the wilderness. And he stayed there for 40 years. So there are serious consequences to losing control of your anger. Mm. All right, the next one. Let's see, let's do this one with Zara. Selfish ambition. And it's wanting to look really important instead of wanting to serve the world. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be good at something, wanting to do the best that you can do. In fact, one of our, one of our principles in this church is, is to strive for excellence. But when you're doing it just for yourself, so you can say, oh, look at me, look at what I've done. Aren't I wonderful? Then that is, do, is doing it the wrong way. So selfish ambition is when you're doing it for yourself. 
The next one is dissensions and factions. What does that mean? Gossiping and causing friends to distrust e distrust each other. Right. Do you ever have a friend that you know gossips, talks about you behind mm -hmm. your back? Because that's very hurtful, isn't it? It is. And it, it keeps, it, it causes friends to, to sort of shy away from each other. It ruins their friendships. So we want to keep away from that. Let's put some more weeds in that bag. We've gone through a lot of these and we haven't plucked the weeds out. <laughs> Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> Just take the whole thing, sweetie. Yuck. <laughs> and this one. Ah, okay. The next one is drunkenness, and I think we all understand that that means drinking too much or drinking while underage. Now, the Apostle Paul said that people that keep doing these things, keep doing all these works of the flesh, without ever trying to change them with Christ's help, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's scary. However, we should understand that before knowing Jesus, all of us, we're like this plot. We may not have done all these bad things, but God reminds us that everybody has done things that God is not pleased with. And without Jesus in our lives to forgive us and make us better, there would be no way for us to be God's children and be part of the kingdom of God. So God is like a gardener. Once we come to him, he begins to pluck out all our bad habits. Let's pluck out the rest of those bad habits. And after we get rid of all of the weeds, we're going to have to vacuum this floor when we're done. <laughs> That's okay, sweetie. Once we get all of this weeds, and there's one hiding over here. Woo! That's got a long root. Once all that is done, then we are left with great soil. Mm. Yay! And once the weeds have been plucked out of the garden of our hearts, Jesus can start planting seeds that will grow into the fruit of the Spirit. And what is the fruit of the Spirit? We're going to say it all together again. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Now let me grab one of my one of my good fruits from over here. What fruit is that? An apple. An apple. apple. It's not a vegetable, it's a fruit. Why do you think that Paul used the uh, symbol of fruit to talk about the spiritual traits that God wants us to have? Hmm. Anybody have an idea? Why not vegetables? I mean, we could have the broccoli of the spirit. Oh, I like fruit. They're so good. <laughs> we could have the potatoes of the spirit. Mm. Um, but he, he said he, want, he wanted to call it the fruit of the spirit. What's different about fruit in broccoli? It tastes good. <laughs> very, very sweet. A lot of people don't like broccoli. Some people do. But broccoli's not sweet like fruit, is it? No. no. Fruit is sweet, and it's kind of pretty, isn't it? Very, yeah. very pretty. Well, Jesus thinks of our hearts when we give them to him as sweet and beautiful like this apple. And inside this apple, will you hold that for a minute for me? Yes. Yeah. Mm. I am going to open this apple and see what we can find inside this apple. Mm. Inside this apple, there are seeds. seeds. Mm. And when we ask Jesus to plant his love in our hearts and take our, oh, over our lives and grow spiritually, just like these apple seeds that will grow into a beautiful tree if we take care of them, we will grow into beautiful children of God. So let's ask Jesus to help us to get rid of the weeds of flesh in our lives so we can become good soil.
ready to grow the fruit of the Spirit. Well, our time is about up, but I want to thank my helpers today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you are all awesome today. Thank you. And until you next time, time, remember that we love you, but God loves you best. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.